are going into our authors. You're going to meet the authors of the powerful she. I want to. I want us to welcome every single one. And would you please put your hands together? Yay. So, as you see, there is no labels. There is no title, and there is no rhyme or reason. They just sat next to the person they felt like. And uh, we'll start with you. We'll go down the line. And ladies, each and every one, please introduce who you are and the name of your chapter, what your chapter is about. And each of you have only how many minutes? Five. Three. Oh. Three minutes. This is for introduction. Just go down the line. Just introduce yourself. We're not talking about the chapter. What the chapter is about. Not the entire chapter. Okay? And then we come back. Okay? All right. Hello. My name is Manushak, also known as May Emerzian. And the chapter is all about, I wrote about, the journey to the futures. Mm. And one might think, I'm making a journey to the futures. No, it's not that's all it's about. It's about a financial journey, <laughs> financial futures. So what triggered me to write about that chapter, it's, uh, you know, you have to consider that I'm, I'm retired and I've I have many experiences and many stories to tell. But this one, a little bit stand up, uh, because it's, first of all, it happened recently. And second of all, it, it involved vision, inner voice, mm. courage to overcome the challenges. Uh, so it was a journey. It was not just like that, done like that. It was a journey that I went through, and uh, I achieved to a point that I would say comfortably that I am a futures trader. Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we're going to come back okay. and all that. Lisa? Hi. Good morning. My name is Lisa McCarley, and my chapter is called The Power of Love. And it's about my journey and adventure with the Free Britney movement. I started out joining a group of maybe two dozen young people in front of the courthouse in downtown LA. And this journey of love took us to become an international movement. I ended up on television. I ended up being interviewed by reporters throughout the world really it was quite fascinating and the sh secret i will share with you i've never shared this before is that i had an epiphany in on a vacation when i went to antigua and barbuda everything that happened in my soul i knew was going to happen mm. before it did yes good evening good morning my name is baitar tamasian <laughs> <laughs> My chapter is called Breaking Barriers, Inspiring Change. I am a 29-year veteran in politics, a staffer to five different um, political elected officials, and my chapter is about immigrant women, young ladies, who come into politics and try to make a difference in their own community. Amen. Yes. Hello. I am Gia Randazzo. Clap. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's me breaking the ice. That's me addressing my own nerves. <laughs> my chapter is a single flower in a concrete street. We all know on some level what that must feel like. If you really tap into your heart what it must feel like to feel like the only source coming out of an impossible situation. And that's what my chapter's about. Having no reason becoming who I am and yet still here I am as who I am. And having me to look in the mirror and be proud of because of that. So, mwah. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Armina Garpedian. Um, my chapter's title is A Life Full of ch chan Choices, Chances, and Changes. <laughs> And 
And it is a story about uh, an Armenian uh, immigrant, a young Armenian uh, woman, me, uh, coming to America and facing a lot of challenges as far as language barrier, cultural shocks, and what choices came to me and what chances I had and what changes I made in my life. There is a little bit of love story involved, how I met my husband, and uh, a little bit of, you know, story about how I witnessed, you know, as a, as a teenager, uh, what my experience has been or how I witnessed uh, the war in Iran, because I was born and raised in Iran, and the, during the war of Iran and Iraq, and, you know, some of the painful memories that, you know, uh, I had gone through or my family had gone through. So there are a little bit of stories that really gave me the opportunity to see the choices that was laid out for me, and uh, you know that I had to take chances and the changes that I made <coughs> in my life. So that's the story about my chapter. Thank you. Yes. Well, good morning, everyone. I think it's still morning. My name is Irma Villegas, and my chapter is called Guided by Faith. So as you guys all stand here in the, well, sit in this room, I can tell you that you're here for a reason. Um, all my life I felt that faith has played a very important role and in everything in my life has been divine timing. So everything that has happened to me, I look for signs, I look for clues. And even this morning I told my daughter that something really funny to happen to me and I'm like, well that wasn't a coincidence, you're supposed to be there, you're supposed to be where you are. So I'm really proud to be a powerful she with all these beautiful ladies and I can't wait for you guys to read our chapters, thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Zadi Kazanchian and <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> and my chapter is called Stitched in Fate. Um, it's about the journey I took with all my health issues to get to do what I do today as a stylist with all the obstacles that came across my life to take away my vision but I overcame not all of it, but still fighting to overcome and do what I love to do, and that is style and design. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Natalie Reg, and my chapter is called My Outdoor Life. And I'm a CPA by profession, but I'm also a mountaineer and a volunteer ski, patrol, ski patroller, which I've been doing for 20 years. So my story is about some of the challenges I fa faced as being a woman in the mountaineering field on a search and rescue team, and kind of just my progress through that and, and where I am now, and how I like to help other women overcome those challenges as well. So, thank you. Well, happy Saturday and happy Powerful She Day. Uh, my name is Tiffany Tsui. My chapter is named Millions and Minefields. Um, during COVID, I started an e-commerce company and built into millions of dollars and in a year and a half. And then very quickly also crashed and burned spectacularly. <laughs> um, but it was during that very much dark night of the soul that I've probably hit my very much bottom and was able to crawl my way back and make um, a phoenix rising. So um, part of that chapter is dedicated to my boyfriend who's sitting back there, Michael Andreas, because if it wasn't for his love and support, I would not be the person I am today and the person I will become. Thank you. Hi, my name is Linda Kane and my chapter is Unleash the Power Within. And my company is Blue Diamond Event Management, and my chapter is about raising children that I did not give birth to. <sighs> Gotta cry. <laughs> and um, why I do the work that I do in being able to travel around the world, help people bring their visions of events to life, and be able to support the children and show them what's possible and despite the things that they've been through. And my husband is here um, and supporting me. And I don't know about you ladies, but having family support and strong friends and strong 
a soulmate to be along the ride and journey with you. And that's what is in my chapter. And I'm excited to be here. And thank you, Lisa, for the opportunity to be a powerful she. So interesting that I follow two people that are um, that are giving praise to their soulmates, and I and I cherish that tremendously because the name of my chapter. I am Jennifer L. Horsepool. Uh, I am your mistress of ceremonies for this event, and I am a powerful she. And so uh, my my chapter is called Finding Love because I suck at it. <laughs> So um, I, a, a, my life is always fabulous until love comes into my life, and then I go, what, what, what? How did? What is? Why is everything falling apart? And so you know, psychology always said, well, it's the trauma that happened to you as a child is the reason you have problems as an adult. And I looked at my childhood, and I was like, I don't have trauma. You know, I have friends that had some serious trauma in their life, and so I was doing the comparison thing, right? my trauma was nowhere near as badly as their trauma, so how could I ever claim trauma as the reason that I can't find love? So lo and behold, I met this lady and she said, it's not the trauma that happens to you as a child, it's just what happened and how did your brain record it? That statement flabbergasted me because it allowed me to go back and look at my childhood and the memories that I had. And what I came to realize is that your memories are feedback. And they're there for a reason. And they're telling you, pay attention to this. You have this memory for a reason, good or bad. What did it tell you? And so after my latest venture of going from the top of my game and falling all the way down into the depths of hell and climbing all the way out, uh, which is essentially how I met Lisa Bubari and Mel Mason and quite a few of you in here, um, Connie Petruro, is along this journey of finding me again. And finding love is really in finding me, and my chapter is about, um, I actually have some advice in there, not in finding love, but in finding the love in, in yourself. And so what I found, truthfully, is the powerful she is me. So I know when I ask a few of them, and I can name some of them, like Armine, it's like, I don't have anything to write. May, I'm struggling until what? A month before the book is supposed to go to publish. It's like after a year, it's uh -huh. like she wrote the entire thing in the airplane coming from Chicago, right? Boston. Boston. I was close. Back <laughs> east. And it's like now it just came to fruition. And I've known about Lisa and Lisa her epiphany and everything. So let's go down the line and because when I wanted to reveal to each one, it's the powers that we have in here and I know some of you I have approached that you are in the audience and you said no, but what does love and grace and courage how did that come about, or what does that resonate in your life? Not necessarily about the money part, but your life. Well, in order to focus, again, I'm going to be talking about the chapter. Uh, <laughs> yes, because actually it's, Closer. actually it's what it, it's all about. It's not about, I mean, that part, yes, financial part, it comes into, in place. But the most important is when you have vision, when you have interest, and in my situation, because I was busy with, you know, my background is real estate, accounting, I was busy raising family. I in, got interested and then I went away from it because I was busy. And then later on it went back. And I'm saying, why this thing is coming back to me? This, this interest about day trading, why? Well, this applies to anybody. If something is coming back to you, that could be anything in, in art, in writing, do something about it. So that's what I did actually. And I went and it was the t perfect timing because when my kids were out of the house and I retired, I said, okay, now I can focus whatever I envisioned in the past. 
So, so this is your passion that you've had since childhood and you reawakened it? Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, it, I was introduced to it one okay, time. Okay, long time ago. I got into it, tapped into it, went back and, you know, I did other stuff. I got busy with so my So you had life. to wait for the kids to go out of the house to take <laughs> care of you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because that's a priority. That's a priority for me. <laughs> All right. You know, uh, that comes. Uh, so, so eventually, I, I pursued my dreams. Uh, when I say dreams, you know, again, it's, it's a lot of things in our mind. Uh, I have lots of other dreams, but because we're focusing about the chapter, mm. uh, I'm talking about this right now. Okay. So, as I said, like, uh, the challenges were very big challenges i mean you think trading is easy that's what i was going to say no. it's like constant no, stress it's level not. first of all you have to deal with uh, mechanics with the environment who are you trading with with the big institutions and they have a way of manu manipulating the whole market so you have to learn a lot and then work with your psychology beautiful work with that be without that you know it's very hard so you know i took oh, all goodness. those actions very nice yeah eventually i would say as i said comfort so you are say, a day trader now yes and it's only two hours a day that's my limit and okay. that's what i set to, for myself beautiful very nice lisa so what is love, grace, and courage? courage? So my daughter is here, and she says, please, Mom, don't. Uh, we need but your mic closer. My story started. Mic closer. Uh, mic closer? OK. Yeah. So my story starts as a ordinary, nondescript kind of probate attorney. and. I had gone into law to do conservatorships, which of course is what led me to the Britney Spears um, movement. And one of the things that was happening that really riled me up was that judges were making orders separating mothers and children. Mm. And it hurt me so much that I knew that I had to do something, but I didn't know what. I would say it was the love that I had for my children that started my adventure thinking about ways to correct, fix, reform the probate courts in Los Angeles and really throughout the country, as it turns out. So in terms of courage of your convictions, um, during COVID, or prior to COVID, I had been meeting with legislative um, representatives trying to enact reform nobody cared. Nobody cared about ordinary people with ordinary problems. And I was desperate um, to find a way to keep families together. Family separation is torture. So I fell apart during COVID, like many people describe, sort of reaching your depth of depression, not wanting to get out of bed, because during COVID, not a single legislator would speak to me. They had lives to save, and understandably so. I got it. But I had put so much time, love, and um, energy, money, into trying to effectuate reform, I had to let go. I had to, during COVID, fall into a depression, let go of it, and it got called back to me. And mm. that, to me, was the uh, really interesting part of the story, is when I had given up hope that love found me, which is why I talk about the Free Britney movement as a love story, um, as much as anything else. And for the first time after um, the Free Britney movement was successful in, in stopping the conservatorship, legislation began to happen, change began to happen, and our courts, 
are being funded properly and correctly so that there is not as much trauma. So for me, love was not the romantic Hollywood love, but the more quiet, gentle love of motherhood, family being together, and I will say to the young people of the Free Britney movement, bravo, you started with nothing but love, and you changed the world. Beautiful. Fights, Arjan. Wow, this is going to be tough to follow, but <laughs> you must have found that one staffer in that legislative office <laughs> who listened to your problem and pushed that legislator <laughs> to do what was right. Yes. And that would have been me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a woman governor in this California. <laughs> my chapter is all about the love that I have for my job. Yeah. A job that I fell into accidentally because as an Armenian, uh, you're raised in this family of you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, <laughs> um, one of those high aspiring um, professions. and. My family always thought of me as uh, the engineer, right? My family thought of me as being the lawyer in the family, and I went to um, getting my degree in political science, and I was about to go to law school. And yet I fell into this job in a political office, in a city council office, where I saw that I can actually make a difference in people's lives when they call for a problem that they need help with. Yes. And that that one job grew into a love of a 29-year career <laughs> that I cherish so much that I wouldn't trade for anything else in this world and that I had, it has made me who I am today. Beautiful. Beautiful. She just looked me in the eyes and I wanted to melt because she's like so nurturing in her eyes. I'm like, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> Grace, courage, love. It's realizing that every single one of us in this room have been abused, experienced pain, endured. May not sound like the story of the person next to you, but it's having the grace, courage, and love to understand that we are all valuable, our voice matters, and no matter who abused us and what they did, we are not them, but we are responsible for who we become because of. Mm. Gave myself chills, that felt good to say. So my chapter is about taking everything that has been force fed to me and not becoming what I should be based off of what has happened to me. And instead, having the grace, courage, and love to forgive and 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 have a relationship with forgiveness so much so that grace, courage, and love, it's really about love. Because everything can follow after. Love is our foundation. Love is our wake-up call. Love is our wake-up call. Whatever you're experiencing in your life right here, right now, in this room with these people, let love be your wake-up call. It'll speak louder than everything going on in your head. It'll speak louder than the abusers and the people you keep having to re frickin forgive over and over, including yourself. Love. Thank you. Wow, oh, hard to follow that. <laughs> let me tell you. Lisa is so persistent. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you, yes. a year ago at 3E event in Rancho Mirage, she introduced the uh, idea of power of she, the powerful she. No, it was the power of she, you are correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she kept calling me, texting me. She even said, you're doing this. I kept saying, no, no, I don't have a story. No, I don't. She said, yes, you do have a story. Everybody has a story. And she was right. A month before the deadline, I said, okay, Lisa, you win. <laughs> I'll do it. Um, so that's something that I want to thank Lisa because that's something that, um, you know, I, I would have never thought that I was able to do to be a co-author. But, you know, it really 
helped me to reflect back to, you know, when I was young, when I was a little girl, you know, back years ago. So it, it, it really, I think if anybody has a chance to do that, write something about yourself, write mm. something about your past, your life, and, and, and you'll see that you have not enough room to, <laughs> uh, you know, if, if you have, you're limited in the words, it's really difficult to fit everything in uh, the chapter. But, um, so main focus on my, uh, so just, just tell you, just, just to let you know that um, I, I'm an Armenian uh, from Iran. Um, I was born and raised there, K through 12. So when I left Iran, I was 18, uh, went to Germany for two years, lived there for two years to obtain religious refugee, uh, uh, you know, to come to United States. So the story is, uh, I'm not going to tell you the entire story, but I'm touching upon the challenges that I've had as an immigrant uh, young woman, uh, you know, going through a lot of changes. And, you know, and then while writing the chapter, I realized, oh, my God, there are a lot of firsts in my life that I've done, but I wasn't realizing it. So, you know, uh, my parents, they have elementary level education uh, with four kids, which now all of them have higher, you know, yep. they're in higher education. But I was able with really difficult, wi with hard work to go to number one uh, university, UCLA, go Bruins, in the in United States. And, you know, I was, o I, at that time, I was only, uh, it was only, you know, uh, Basically, I was a new immigrant at the time when I transferred from GCC, but uh, after that, you know, go into higher education, continue to be, to go to dental school, become a dentist, open up, opening up my practice, uh, running a business, having three beautiful kids, um, juggling a lot of things, and then all of a sudden, one day, I decide I want to run for Glendale Unified School District Board of Education. Is, is it... There is nothing happening. It's okay. the garage. We are not having any kind of a... Um, okay. I'm wow. just evoking. I you know, even know. the building is evoking. <laughs> the stage is shaking, actually. The, the stage is evoking with everything. <laughs> no. By the way, everyone, calm down. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. Okay. If you have any Perfect. fears, you talk to me. <laughs> So fast forward, I decided to uh, run for school board is an elected position, and uh, that opened up a whole another oppor not opportunities, but you know the way that I saw education was here, uh, or uh, how decisions are made through K through 12, and I gave uh, my time, my life for nine years to serve on the board of education, uh, and I. Throughout those nine years, I literally, um, you know, that you can't, it's hard, it's difficult to find, I, I don't consider myself politician, but it's difficult to find <laughs> politicians <laughs> that they, they make decisions based, based on what's right and not based on their political ideologies. Yes. So that's, that's something that, you know, it's important to consider if anyone is running for any position, you know, think about what's right for your constituents, what's right for, for our youth rather than following your, you know, political ideologies. But anyways. Um, Thank you. And uh, one thing, why uh, Lisa chose 18 uh, co-authors? Because one plus eight is nine. Right? <laughs> If you haven't figured it out, first it was going to be 33, and then we came to, actually, we had another person, and I said, I'm sorry, it doesn't add up to nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Lisa, one of the, the first things that, so I'm the first, actually, I forgot to mention it in my chapter, so I'm the first Armenian-American mom serving on the Board of Education. And our family, so my husband was the mayor of Glendale, and at the same time, we were the only couple, couple. In, in the household in Glendale, in the history of Glendale, that we had an elected position, and that was an, you know, a crazy, crazy time for us. But that's my yeah. story in the chapter. Okay, well, you guys have had some powerful stories. Let me see. <laughs> um, yeah, it's well, the I'll tell you about love, courage, and grace. So I myself am an immigrant as well. I'm from Mexico, so I totally came to this country um, at five years old, not understanding the language, uh, the culture, um, anything. And my parents had to navigate all that, and it was difficult. 
Um, and we finally moved to Glendale when I was about 11 years old. And in Glendale, we kind of made it home. We traveled a lot before then. I didn't really have that kindergarten friend. Um, we, you know, I didn't understand a lot of the culture, right? And so when I got to Glendale, I really just went to school and, you know, and then I just let life unfold. I was kind of really mad when I was young. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of life is this? Why? Uh, do all these things happen to me? Why are things happening to me? And then I realized as I got older, um, I read a very powerful book in my 20s. It's called Conversations with God. With God. And Neil that Donald book Walsh. really, really, like, it, 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 I found my soul in that book. It really just allowed me to really rethink why are things happening for to me to why are things happening for me? for me and so the whole time i was there there in my chapter you'll hear of two stories that were very very important in my life and there's no way that it could be a coincidence again i talk about divine timing you guys are all here in divine timing so you guys are here for a reason we have one life and I just feel like we need to take advantage of it, every single minute of it. My poor daughters and husband, they think I'm crazy because I say yes to a lot of things, but I want them to know that they can experience a lot more when they say yes. So thank you, Lisa, for inviting me to be a part of the co-authors, and I never thought I'd be. So um, again, say yes a lot more often so you guys can experience life to its fullest. Thank you. I hate talking to <laughs> people on stage. I really, really do. I'm a very talkative person, but this is very, very hard for me, which was one of the reasons I didn't want to say yes to Lisa. But she said yes. <laughs> and she said yes. She pushed and me she a lot. Yes. She pushed me for quite some time. And just like everyone else, I didn't think I had a story. I know I have a story, but I didn't think it was a story anybody would want to read about. Um, Sorry. <laughs> well, I kind of had a different experience. When Lisa brought up the book, I signed up right away. And then I thought, what am I going to write about? <laughs> what did I do? Can I get my money? <laughs> what do I do? So my chapter is about you know, what I love. One of the things I love, mountaineering, climbing, sharing that with my husband, just the challenges that I faced as, as a woman, as a patroller. Um, but talking about grace, love, and courage, and I was talking to Lisa a few weeks ago, and I thought, ah, my, nobody's going to read about climbing. What is it about? What? And she helped me realize that I didn't write about one of my greatest challenges, which was, you know, I had a couple miscarriages. I had four rounds of IVF. I thought I wasn't going to have kids. And now I have two beautiful children. Um, yes. But I realized the courage that I, you know, climbing and, and being on top of a frozen mountain with, you know, looking down a crevasse, thinking, why am I doing this? I'd rather be sitting in bed reading a book. And that inner courage that it takes, you know, was applied to my life. It's like, well, this is what we have to do. I have to go through therapy. I have to do other things. And something I didn't write about, and I just didn't think of it as a challenge, I don't know why it didn't dawn on me until I talked to Lisa about it. And I'm really glad she did because it helped me make that connection. Sorry, did anybody hear that? <laughs> um, so, you know, grace, love, and courage. It takes courage to face challenges and, you know, you do what you have to. And now I get to share my love with my kids who are still two and four and a half. But I want to be able to share climbing and, and the joy of... Um, climbing your peak, you know, to get up there. So thank you. Yes. I have to do this for my daughter. Yes. <laughs> my grace, my love, and my courage is my family. Yes. They helped me, especially at the time. It was just my husband. Uh, my chapter is about, uh, it's called Stitched in Fate because of what I came back to do in life. 
what was taken from me early on when I was pregnant with my daughter, uh, and all the challenges that came were presented to me at a very young age, at the age of 21, that I was told I, I would be blind by 40. Mind you, I was seven months pregnant. <laughs> so I don't, I can't talk about a lot of it because I will get very emotional again, but I have to say my grace, my courage, and my love are always my husband, my son, my daughter, my son-in-law now and my beautiful, beautiful granddaughter. Of course, my friends and my extended family, but the three people next to me for the past 30 plus years have been my husband, my daughter, and my son. So they mm. are, as they are, my grace, my courage, and my love. And I have those tattoos. I have stitched in fate here, and I have a three-line cross here, which is my husband, my son, and my daughter. Aww. Sorry, I needed a minute, but I couldn't not do that for her. Beautiful. Okay, I do want to admit I was strong-armed into writing this book as well. <laughs> Mike, closer. Oh, um, thank you. I got a Facebook message and I ignored it for two weeks and finally <laughs> got a call. <laughs> um, but I'm very thankful because it was a very therapeutic experience. I was at my lowest of lows. Um, and my story is really about failure. Um, I was made in China, so I was born and raised. <laughs> so I do have defects, <laughs> a lot of them. Um, <laughs> they don't do better Q&As before they let you out. <laughs> um, so I came here when I was 14, and I am 46, so I thought I'm very well Americanized. Um, and it wasn't until I'm facing my deepest, darkest um, failures and biggest failures in life, and that I realized, holy cow, I'm a lot Chinesier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> because as a lot of your Armenian authors to know that um, doctors, engineers, lawyers is the life path that we laid out from the moment we were conceived. And um, that was not the path I took, um, but I had, had been successful and so it was never an issue to surface until that moment of failure. And I recognized it's not the failure of the business, it's the failure of me. That's what I thought I was a failure because mm. I didn't live up to the family standard, the culture standard, and my perceived inner standard to myself, of myself. And to the point, I was telling my boyfriend, I don't deserve you, and I think you should leave me because I'm a failure. Um, but through that, through the courage and love and grace of him and my fellow friends, including Aline and Lisa here, um, one thing I realized is failure is the beginning, every step, to not the success, but to the development and the truly inner development of ourselves. Yes. The one podcast that I heard that Aling did it was phenomenal, and I would love to share it with all of you here. She said, she asked her son every day, what have you failed today? Yes. Because as a society, whether it's Asian or American or anywhere else in the world, we we celebrate successes. We never celebrate failures. We mm. hide them. Everything in social media is about the beauty, the success, the money, the glamour. No one talks about their failures on that stage, on that platforms. So Brene Brown, in her, uh, sorry, my nose is running. <laughs> in her, um, thesis is all about courage and the admission to know that you have the courage to admit your failures. You have the courage to put your biggest failures on black and white and publish it and let other people read. Because it's hopefully using my failure as an example, as a statement, thank you, 
as a statement and as a testament to say it's okay because when we walk, every single step we take is a fall to the next stage of life. So I'm here to say I'm loving my failures and I'm going to fail more because that's part of my growth into the 2.0 version. You're so cute. <laughs> I love her made in China. <laughs> How do you top that? <clears throat> um, when Lisa and I started working together on her event, I had no idea that I would be persuaded to be part of the Powerful She Book. But any of you that know Lisa very well know that somehow she gets her way. And so, uh, <laughs> so get it, away. <laughs> it, she's very persuasive. It's been an honor, actually. And when I first wrote the chapter, it was business. It was, and and she called me up and she says, "You can't do this. This is, the, you know, you have to find where your power is." And I'm like, oh, "I don't know. All I do is work." Um, <clears throat> and so she really encouraged me to dig deep, which led me into looking at my reason why I do what I do, which is my family, and started my career at a very young age, at 18, and I didn't have children of my own, and through the years, um, been 40 years with my husband now, and through the years, thank you, um, we've had the privilege of raising two of his boys, and then raising uh, four other children that just God brought into our lives in a variety of different ways. So we have five boys and one daughter, and um, that's the reason that I do what I do, is to give them the opportunities to change the trajectory of their life, to be the first in their families to graduate from college, the first in their families to be able to uh, have the careers and do the things that they want to do and desire to do in life, and have traveled the world with me. So it's just been really, and that's what my chapter is about, is about being the mom to children that didn't have a mom, which gave me the children that I was unable to have birth to. Beautiful. Talk about the power of the 3E, because this event actually supports Lisa's nonprofit called Heal Within International, and that nonprofit supports children whose mothers are absent from their everyday lives, so kudos to you, Linda. So <clears throat> one last thing on that. When Lisa and I met, I had no idea that that's the work that she did. And we both are February 3rd birthdays. Yep. <laughs> that powerful There are three. no coincidences. Right. I love it. Um, so uh, grace, courage, and love. Um, my, chapter, uh, my chapter is about finding love. And... Um, as today, you know, we went through that evoke exercise, and then we're going to go through an embrace exercise, and then we're going to evolve. And um, I actually used the power of the three E in writing my chapter. I was trying to think, like, what am I going to do? And um, I can write about business all day long. I do public relations, and so uh, I do business very well. What I didn't do was be vulnerable and talk about the actual real pains in my life. And so. To have that published, I'm a little bit like, <laughs> you know. So I give myself grace. And uh, I gave myself grace, really, uh, when I, I started climbing out of hell. I had to give myself grace for and, and forgive myself for not knowing what I didn't know. And, um, and I encourage all of you, when you go home today, to continue to do evoke, embrace, and evolve uh, because you and give yourself grace as you discover more and more and more about yourself and then have the courage to go deep and the deeper you go just by being curious you cannot judge yourself while you're going along you can't judge oh my trauma wasn't as traumatic as anybody else's the reason I wrote what I wrote is because my trauma is so ridiculously stupid <laughs> that I think God made mine like that and then gave me a platform to talk about it so that everyone can feel that they have something worthy enough of evoking within their past to find out where your roadblocks are. And you need courage to be able to do that. And you need grace to yourself 
to really be able to start looking at things and figuring things out. And I, I talk about what mine is in my chapter, but then the ultimate really is in finding love. And I do love really well. I just don't do somehow this relationship thing that everybody <laughs> gets to involve themselves in. I, I did for 10 years. It didn't work out so well. Um, <laughs> and so I, I, yeah, I continue to evoke, I continue to embrace myself, and I continue to evolve, and I do that through grace, courage, and love. And I thank Lisa for thank the opportunity you. to put that in print so that I can make an impact in other people's lives. Thank you. This is amazing. Aren't they just amazing, human <laughs> ladies? Uh, it's one of my small little pet peeves that when we are in a group, when we're on a call, when we are on a Zoom, and you will hear this a lot because I sometimes, unfortunately, correct people <laughs> by saying, it's not, hi guys, it's when a room is full of ladies, is ladies and gentlemen, we're honoring you as well, but it's we are ladies. Hello, ladies. And if we don't want to say ladies, we can just say, hello. In one way, love, grace, and courage. And my chapter starts from where I come from, not only being an Armenian, but I'm a true mutt. <laughs> my father, Persian, my mother, Armenian. That's why I do not have an I-A-N, I just have the I, <laughs> I. And, uh, but my teacher, my mentor, the person who I believe I have follow through was my grandmother. That was part of the Armenian genocide. And through standing up and showing up in life and being where she was, she taught me that history may repeat itself. Now we know it does. But forgiveness comes from in here. We forgive, but we don't forget. We forgive and never forget who I am, as we talked about. I am who I am. So my chapter, when I wrote it, and my mom, who will be here this afternoon, and she, poor thing, she can't read, but her, she's got immaculate degeneration, so she's got this magnifier, and I took the first home, and I was so excited. She's like, congratulations, and the next day, she read, it's like, the dates are wrong. And why did you say all the things you, need, you wrote in here? And I said, because it's about overcoming the challenges. This entire, our panel is not about us. It's about what we wrote that perhaps it might ignite one little thing in someone else and make a difference in you and another woman, a girl, a community, because I have a mission to take this book, and if there is another one, but every single one of them, from Alina, who will be here this afternoon, who is my cousin's daughter, and we have Lady Jen Duplessis, we have Liana Tomikian, who is not here, another powerhouse lady, we have Sanaz, who lives in Malta, Germany, and she said, yes, I want to write. And you will read about her story, that her children were taken away from her, and how she survived. Carla, who is unfortunately sick, and she said she can't be here. And uh, that's it. All of us, it's about what we can pay it forward. And I believe each and every one of those ladies are here to pay it forward. And that has become my mission, not only to empower women, it's for us to learn how to show up in life just as we are so that we can stand up and know I matter. 
so that we can speak and have a voice. And today I'm going to pick few people. Actually, before I do that, uh, we've got only a few moments to go. Would you like, on behalf of where we are, just for three minutes and not more, because we will stop you, talk about what's happening right now with Arzach? Paizor. Well, you've all seen it in the news, what's going on in our homeland, in our historic Artsakh. We fought for 30 years to keep the independence of Artsakh, and in a matter of two years, after losing over 5,000 lives, we had to give that land that has been ours for thousands of years back to a country who doesn't appreciate it, who doesn't know the power of that land, who doesn't know the people of that land, back to them, because this is how world politics works. Because we don't have oil to give to the world. Mm. We only have our love, our history, our compassion, but we don't have oil. And if you don't have that money, you don't have the oil, no one cares about you. Mm. I've learned that the hard way in politics, and this is what's happening to our people now. I've just come back from Armenia. We have a small apartment there. We gave it to an Artakh family who just arrived, who had just left everything behind, their home, just took the clothes off their backs, and made it through 40 hours of driving into the border of Armenia. And for what? After all these years, after all these lives we've lost, we had to give that land back. And so today we struggle. We struggle so that the world hears our voice, mm -hmm. that the world hears what we're going through, that this doesn't happen to people, that we don't have to go through this genocide again. How many times do one group of people have to go through a genocide? So I have made it my mission and my job to make this our voice to be heard in California. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I don't need this. I don't, no. uh, this is where we um, end the panel. And uh, we've got a few moments before we start. Uh, I'm going to ask if there is any questions. We're going to take only three questions for the panel. Only three. Uh, because if not, we're going to be here until tonight. The books will be available tonight after our book signing and our celebration and our uh, red carpet. So who has a question? We're going to go with three questions, and you can address it to anyone at the panel. Yes. Hi, good afternoon, ladies. My question is to the beautiful lady in the bluish green dress. I was listening to you, and you said that when you failed, you took that very personal, and, you know, not to judge, but it sounded like you almost self-sabotaged yourself through your mind. So how did you overcome that as a person, as a woman, and as somebody that comes from a culture where I understand, because my parents are Jamaican, and it, they can be just as... So, so the question is, how did you overcome... How did you overcome that thing? Being how fallen. Did, yeah, how did you learn to love yourself again? Because when you feel like you're that much of a okay. failure, you have to, you know... Who is this addressed to? Tiffany. Yes. I feel you, sister. And um, a lot of different things. One is I really dove into a lot of books, podcasts, and um, hearing what other failure stories looked like and sounded like and what they did to get out of that. Um, another thing is I was lucky enough to be brought to Secret Knock this past uh, this past March and met Aling and Lisa and through other powerful women to hear their stories and their experiences and their views on uh, failure because they're very successful women but they didn't come 
from anything. They built themselves to this point, and they went through a lot of failures to get to this point. Um, another thing is I had to disassociate myself from that part of the culture and that part of my parents. Um, mm -hmm. My parents actually live 20 minutes from me now. We haven't lived in the same on the same con or they lived in New York City. I lived on the West Coast, and I was very blessed to not have that remote control from my very <laughs> controlling mom. But as soon as she moved close by, I sensed that that was like the elephant in the room that we didn't talk about. But I had to emotionally and mentally disassociate myself with that part of them and said, I can love them, I can care for them, but I don't have to subscribe to that type of religion and that type of thought pattern. Um, and it's not easy, but it's something that I, it's like the bad wolf and the, the, the good wolf and the bad wolf, and I have to listen to my good wolf more than I have to listen to my bad wolf. Um, and I'm extremely blessed, too, to have the best partner, and also, I think, the hottest partner. <laughs> 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 because he's the voice that is, he's the voice of Angel that's on my side every single day that is putting the the voice of God in essentially into my head and then seeing what I can see. And he was my eyes and when I couldn't see and he was leading me every step of the way. So um, there's a lot of, there's a saying that behind the successful woman is a, or successful men is a successful woman. And I think the reverse is as, um, as true and powerful because behind a successful woman is a successful man. And if anything, it's even more so because he or they are able to dumb down, not dumb down, but they recognize our value and our um, ability and our future and they don't have to compete with us. So they have enough self-confidence and power to support us because when they support us, we together as a team become stronger. We are never in competition. Right. And for that reason, it makes me love him and respect him that much more. So, <laughs> so I really wish for Jennifer and every single one of the ladies in the room for that type of partnership because we, are not just in the sisterhood, but in the relationship with other men, especially. We need <coughs> powerful men as much as we need powerful women. True, very true. All right, any other questions? No, of course. Right here. Thank you. Um, and you are? RP Creek Korean. Thank you. Baidzar's my sister from this mother, <laughs> not my mother. Um, I have an issue with forgiveness these days. Mm. So I, I forgive the people around me. I've been hurt, all, like we all have, but I can't forgive what's happening to Armenia and with, from the same people that's doing it over and over again. So my question is, when you talk about forgiveness and freeing yourself and bringing love in, if it's outside of your control, which I know it is. How important is it to forgive, like the Turk, pe the Turkish people, or the Turkish government, or the Azeris? Like, how does that play into you personally, and is it something you have to do and practice? Who is it addressed to? Whoever wants to talk about forgiveness. I'll take a moment, and then if you want to tag in at any point. So, to me. It takes more energy to carry the weight of the world and the anger and the rage. It takes so much energy that when I take this courage and the love and the grace and all of the words you want to implement into that and I focus my energy on what it takes to be love and see people for the pain that they've endured and what their life is, what they've gone through. Forgiveness comes from also realizing that people sometimes really are ignorantly doing the best they can with what they know. And so I'm not, I can't necessarily speak to the mass amounts of the people causing the pain, but you, the woman looking right at me right now, 
Your strength is in your forgiveness. Who you become because of your forgiveness is your power. It's your grace. It's what's possible in this world because you said over and over and over again, same topic, if it takes forever, over and over, you put your energy towards I can and I will do what I can in this moment and clear that space up for love and light to come in so that I can see who's in front of me right now. Because if I was so angry based off of what happened to me in my world, I would trust none of you, especially the men, and you would all have ulterior needs from me and you'd be life sucking everything out of me if that was my focus. And guess what? Since that's my focus, that's what I'm gonna find. You have light, you have love. Don't suffocate it with n this anger and rage that comes from the things that, if you don't feel heard, be heard. Look into yourself. Because all the work for all of us in forgiveness, it's already here. It's in every seat you're sitting in. The warmth of your seat right now, your cushion. It's in you. We're just here reminding you of what you already know. You already are forgiveness. It's not something you're necessarily going to do. You're going to look at your relationship with it. But you already are it. Yeah. Nice. So, there. I, one of the things that I would suggest because I see a lot of pain in our community. And the way I deal with it is to be of service. So mm -hmm. take that leadership role in what you have a passion in. And if you feel that hurt, do something about it. I would encourage you to find like-minded people that can raise awareness to what you are feeling. And so for me, it's always service. It's about being there for other people and being there for yourself. And know, because we all know what we can control and we all know what we cannot control. So we can control our attitude, our mindset, and what action we can do about what we feel and that forgiveness. So find an outlet to serve and that will I think, I think, and then you become the example. So you don't, you know, you don't embrace the hate, embrace all the negative stuff that goes with it. You decide to do something positive in service to your community. That's what I would suggest. I want to real quick follow up with one little thing because it's important because I say what I say with passion, so I need Gina. to also clear it up real quick. We're on our time. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Don't or do? No. Okay. Just, <laughs> hey, hey, okay. Um, and when I referred to my childhood and the pain and this and that that comes in and forgiveness and stuff and it's inward, I'm saying you do the work inward, but you show up outward. So if you're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. have someone else, like be in support of others, be in contribution. Being in contribution, you will be, your love tank will be fed. Who you become and who you want to be will start showing up in the people that you give to. So when I say it's inner work, like it's in you, everything you said is on point. I was like, oh my God, she's wording it so much better. Thank God. Because, yes, it is, it's in you. The work is to be done in you, but your feedback is everywhere around you and who you be for everyone else. The mic goes the other way. Uh, it's okay. Um, any other question? All right. So, um, I'm going to change the mood. I'm going to change the mood because... It became a little bit heavy, and I believe in the things that I can control. And I have realized the things that are out of my control, I'm too small to control. And working with people with OCD and everything, I help them understand it's not that it's a disorder, but it's wanting to constantly have order the way you know what order is. And when it's outside of your order, then it becomes a dis-ease because you're not at ease with what is comfortable for you. So when I explain it like that, especially children, they love it. They go, oh, you mean I'm in control all the time? And I'm going, yes, except they're not doing it the way you understand it. And I think that's exactly how our life is. We may not have control over what's happening because we're, they're bigger, they have different plans. It's like a big chess game, and they're playing the chess, 
and we are the board, and they're playing the chess, right? And understand, as long as you know who you are, because I come from a home, and I said this, my grandmother said, forgive, do not forget. And I was raised with absolutely no fear for anything and no hatred for anyone. None. For me, it doesn't matter. We are made in China or made somewhere else. Um, we're all the same. We're all women. We come to puberty. We have had babies. We've had losses. We've had miscarriages. We've had, in many ways, in different way of either giving birth or choosing to be who we are. That's the beauty, and that's called me. And it starts with one person. I can spread the love over here, or we can go on and saying, how dare you? They do, what do I do? I choose, as you said, service. And I want to say thank you to Irma, she just accepted to be the first female uh, Hispanic Presidente for the Glendale Kiwanis as a leader. And, uh, you know, there are so many people in here that are distinguished. We have distinguished council, politicians. Every single person in here is a queen. Every single seat that you are occupying, you better know that you are a queen. And when I work with young girls, I always say, remember, you are a castle, and you better be careful who enters this castle. What doors you open, because not every single one is a knight in shining armor. Okay? But when we grow up, we look at our past, and we say, how dare what did I do? Why did I do? The woulds and whys and the shoulds and coulds, it doesn't really matter. It's like, I went through what I went through, which is a part of it, a part of it in the book, because of where I am today and how I can empower another woman. If I did not go through that, if I didn't experience it, I wouldn't know what to say to a girl or to a woman or to a man, it doesn't matter. It's who we are. And thank you very much for saying something about the nonprofit because I am honored. And I started that nonprofit because of my grandmother who became motherless at age five. But because I don't have a children of my own, I wanted to spread the love and be of service for those and mom doesn't have to be that. Mom can be incarcerated, institutionalized. Mom can have lost custody. Mom can be, I, we helped someone who was deployed. And I have one of the most gorgeous, beautiful ladies all the way in the back who I was honored. I know you're laughing. Just raise your hand. Ani Jan, our first for our nonprofit. And to this day, Thank you for saying, and I am gracious to say, I'm in her part, I'm part of her life, and no matter how old she becomes, I'm gonna be her mother figure. And we have so many in here. And with that, I am honored for every single woman who said yes to herself. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Say yes yes. Yes yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay. Say yes yes. yes, yes. Because the first one is for you, and the second one is for the universe to bring whatever you want for you. Right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. All right. Now we're going to step down and say thank you to all of you. Give us a few moments because we're all going to go to the back of the room. Julie. We're going to help create our circle, and we're going to create two circles. 
an inner circle, an outer circle. And we're going to do the embrace exercise before we go to lunch. Some of you may be uncomfortable, but realize it is from uncomfort that you become comfortable with who you are. Okay?